Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Ship your grain across the sea. After many days, you may receive a return. Invest in seven ventures, yes, in eight, because you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. If clouds are full of water, they pour rain on the earth. Whether a tree falls to the south or to the north, in the place where it falls, there it will lie. Whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. As you do not know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. Sow your seed in the morning, and at evening let your hands not be idle, for you do not know which will succeed, whether this or that, or whether both will do equally well. Light is sweet, and it pleases the eyes to see the sun. However many years anyone may live, let them enjoy them all, but let them remember the days of darkness, for there will be many. Everything to come is meaningless. You who are young, be happy while you are young, and let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. Follow the ways of your heart and whatever your eyes see, but know that for all these things God will bring you into judgment. So then, banish anxiety from your heart and cast off the troubles of your body, for youth and vigor are meaningless. And once again, um, sarcastic Solomon strikes again with some of this advice. It's um, tongue-in-cheek advice. He tells us what to do, and then he tells us it's meaningless. But there's a, there's a very famous verse in this Ecclesiastes chapter 11. It's actually the first verse, and it sounds very different in the way that we're used to hearing it. In the NIV, it says, ship your grain across the sea, and after many days you may receive a return. In the King James, it says, cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. This cast your bread upon the waters. This idea of casting your bread upon the waters. In the Old English, King James, it sounds mysterious. It sounds a little uh, mystical. And I've had people actually ask me, how do we interpret that? But here in the NIV, it's a little clearer. Ship your grain across the sea, and after many days you may receive a return. In other words, export, if the market is not viable close by, export to a place where uh, your goods are bringing a better price, and you may in fact receive a, a return on your investment by sending your, your goods to a distant port. So ship your grain across the sea, and after de- many days you may receive a return. It's actually financial advice, and it is um, sound financial advice. He follows this with some more sound financial advice that I have in fact put in practice in my own life. It says, invest in seven ventures, yes, in eight, you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Now, what is this principle? This is the principle known as diversification. And that principle in economics teaches us essentially that you don't want to have all of your money in one one venture. You want to divest your money between many ventures so that if one goes bad, uh, you won't be ruined. And um, the assumption is that you will choose some winners and some losers. And so the advice of Solomon is invest in eight different ventures because you don't know what disaster will come upon any of the eight. And so there's safety in diversification. I think that is um, wise advice for 3,000 years ago, and I think it's wise advice for us today. So friends, um, uh, someone has said it differently, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Same principle. Spread your wealth around in various different diversified investments. Don't have them all in housing or all in stock or all in bonds or all in um, gold or, or etc. There's a proverb um, 
against laziness kind of inserted. Verse 4, whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at clouds will not reap. This is talking about daydreamers. Daydreamers are not going to be actively farming their land. They're not going to be participating in the day-to-day grind that they should be. And so it's okay to dream, but it's not okay to let your daydreaming make you lazy, make you avoid those things that need to be done today. I myself am a daydreamer, but I don't let it inhibit my responsibilities. God's ways are are higher than our ways. Uh, Verse 5, that's not the wording of Solomon. That's my words of what this means. But it says, as you do not know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. In other words, Solomon's saying, even earthly things like how the wind is established to blow this way and that, or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, even these things are mysterious and they're beyond the grasp, at least of most of us. And so his point is, if you can't understand the natural realm and all of its minute details, how can you understand the spiritual realm where God dwells? And of course, the answer is God's ways are higher than our ways. He dwells in in a mysterious zone that is only um, lightly and slightly revealed within the scriptures. So we, um, uh, we need to stay in our lanes. More financial advice, um, essentially that you should work hard. It says, sow your seed in the morning and at evening, let your hands not be idle. For you do not know which will succeed, whether this or that, whether both will do equally well. So once again, don't be um, lazy, be diligent, be hardworking, be consistent. I learned a long time ago that a large portion of being successful in life is just a matter of showing up every day and doing your best. And so we all have good days and bad days, but uh, we need to show up every day and um, try to be fruitful in whatever endeavors we have before us. Solomon's sarcasm strikes again in verse 8. However many years anyone may live, let them enjoy them all, but let them remember the days of darkness, for there will be many days of darkness, and everything to come is meaningless. It's, it's really sad, honestly, to hear Solomon's refrain over and over again, everything is meaningless, everything is meaningless. The man was really uh, depressed at this stage of his life. When considering his life without God, he was finding no meaning. And so we're, we're coming to that in the next chapter, the realization of, of where meaning is found. But at this point, he's still giving sarcastic advice. This continues in verse 9. He says, You who are young, be happy while you're young. Let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. Follow the ways of your heart and whatever your eyes see. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. In other words, be cheerful. Enjoy life while you're young. Seek pleasure wherever you, wherever you want to seek pleasure. But don't forget, God will judge you for everything you do. And so the, the advice could be changed, worded differently to make it sage-like and valuable advice. To change it, I would say, remember that God is participating in your life. And there are many things to cheer you and give you joy while you're young and while you're old. While you're old. So do enjoy the pleasures that God has provided for us, but don't forget God. Because, friends, at the end of the day, everything is about Jesus. Everything's about Jesus. This life is not about this life. This life is about the creator of all things and what comes next. So, Lord, we thank you for these proverbs against laziness. May we be found good workers with excellent work habits in whatever arena you've called us to in our lives. May our co-workers and our employers see us as excellent examples of people who are focused on their work and who are trustworthy, not lazy, not daydreamers, but steady, steady, consistent workers. And Lord, in all of our ways, may we be fruitful in the days of our flesh. But ultimately, Lord, help us not to forget that this life is about you, that you, Lord, are our partner going through life, 
May we enjoy our lives together with you from this day and for every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.